everyone, I'm Sarah and this is Budget Sew, so, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today I'm going to show you how I tailored a blouse down to a smaller size so that it fit better. This included raising the shoulder seam, removing the shoulder pads, and taking in the side seams. This is the blouse before. from Value Village for $8.99. It's a perspective classic 100% polyester chiffon blouse in size medium. I love the pleated shoulders and the pleated front, but not the shoulder pads. They were just too big and I didn't like that I could see the shoulder pads through the blouse. I bought this blouse to wear with a skirt that I'm sewing for my friend's wedding. The jacket and skirt pattern are Vintage McCall's 5136, published in 1959. So stay tuned for the reveal of those fantastic makes in a future sew along. My sewing confidence flagged once I decided to tailor the blouse. I took off the sleeves and removed the shoulder pads and thought, oh no, what now? It took me a few months to do this video, not because it's a complicated project, but because I put more thought into this than was actually necessary. Good news though, this is a relatively easy project and I've got my sewing mojo back. So let's get started. Shoulder pads be gone. The first thing I did was unpick the shoulder seams and remove the shoulder pads. Now I sew up the front of all my blouses with buttons, leaving just enough room for me to pop my head through the top of the blouse. This way there's no gaping between the buttons or buttons coming undone unknowingly. Then I decided to take in three quarters of an inch on all sides of the seams for a total of an inch and a half out of each side. My first step at the sewing machine was to sew the front of the blouse closed. I made sure that I caught the placket back in the seam and sewed as close as I could to the fold in the front. I sewed from the bottom button up to the second button from the top. After I tried on the blouse to see if there were any pulls in the stitching, I decided to go back and stitch almost to the bottom of the blouse. I didn't like how the two front pieces didn't stay overlapped. When sewing, I had to use pins to hold the chiffon in place because it was so slippery. I had a few pale blue Guterman spools of thread in my collection, but none of them were quite pale enough or the blue was just too green, so I decided to use white serger thread instead. This was the best match to the blouse and not noticeable. I used serger thread because it's a finer thread than regular thread. My next step at the sewing machine was to take in the side seams. In order for the new side seam to lay flat, I unpicked the hem of the blouse about 3 inches on each side seam. The hem will be fixed later. I didn't originally pin the side seams, but after sewing up the front of the blouse, I decided that this was the best way to hold the chiffon in place. I've never sewn chiffon before, so this was a new and fun experience for me. I sewed 3 quarters of an inch in from the side seam from the underarm to the hem. I removed the pins as I sewed, but held the fabric firmly in place with my fingertips so that the top layer of the blouse didn't slide against the bottom layer as it passed through the feed dogs. You see here that I keep turning the hand wheel on the sewing machine. I made sure that my sewing machine needle was in the down position in the fabric before putting any pressure on the sewing machine pedal to sew. This also kept the fabric in place. I had to unfold the hem that I unpicked in order to sew all the way down to the bottom of the blouse. Then I did the same thing to the other side of the blouse, sewing in 3 quarters of an inch from the side seam from the underarm to the hem. I used a finer sewing machine needle for this project. I chose a unique brand sharp size 9 or 70 needle for woven fabrics. I purchased this needle in a package of 4 from Lens Mill store for $1.99. This small finer needle was a great choice because it did not make big holes in the delicate fabric like a regular needle would when sewing. I had to unfold the original pressed hem in order to sew all the way to the bottom edge of the blouse. I struggled a bit to get it unrolled and had to unpick a bit further along the hem, but in the end, I was able to line it all up properly and stitch. Before I continue with the tailoring, please like this video and share it with your friends and family. I'd love to help others refashion and upcycle on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. 
Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the tailoring. After trying on the blouse, I decided to gradually taper the new 3 quarter of an inch side seam into the old side seam for the bottom quarter of the blouse. I felt that it draped better that way. Next, I measured 3 quarters of an inch in from the top of the shoulder seam and made a mark with my blue chalk. I made this mark to raise the shoulder seam and reduce the size of the shoulders because I removed the shoulder pads. Then I did the same thing to the other shoulder seam. Here comes the scary part, cutting into the blouse. I really hesitated here because I wanted to make sure that I got this right. I made a small cut into the chiffon at my blue chalk mark. I smoothed out the fabric repeatedly to make sure that it laid flat so that I wouldn't cut off too much. As I cut, I gently tapered the curve so that it blended into the original curve of the sleeve. I didn't want to cut off any fabric under the arm because I didn't want to make the blouse armhole bigger than the armhole of the sleeve. The sleeve should always be a bit bigger than the blouse armhole for ease of movement. By cutting off 3 quarters of an inch at the shoulder and taking in the side seams, the sleeve should still fit the blouse. Fingers crossed, right? Bye bye big shoulders. Then I cut into the blouse at the other shoulder seam. I smoothed out the fabric as I cut so that I didn't cut too far into the body of the blouse. Next it was time to see if the sleeve still fit. With the body of the blouse inside out and the sleeve the right way out, I pinned the sleeve to the blouse starting at the underarm seam. You'll see here that I didn't cut off the excess fabric in the side seams. This way I had a large French seam on the inside of the blouse and there would be no fraying. Earlier when I removed the sleeves, I saw that the original pleating was machine based across the top of the sleeve's seam allowance. This was perfect because I didn't have to worry about the pleating disappearing after I removed the sleeve and before I pinned it back on. When pinning, I adjusted the ease as best as I could. I didn't ease stitch the sleeves because I didn't want to mess up the shoulder pleating, nor did I want to make any additional holes in the fabric because it was so delicate. If your sleeve does not have pleating at the shoulder and it's not made of chiffon, then I would recommend ease stitching it before pinning it to the blouse. Ease stitching is when you stitch along the seam line using long machine stitches, then pull the threads to adjust the fit. Since I did not ease stitch, this step took longer. Then I pinned the other sleeve to the blouse. When I was pinning the sleeve, I wished I had ironed the blouse where I had unpicked because the fabric was folded from being sewn previously. I never used to iron my sewing, not before, not during, and not after, but now that I've been sewing for a long time, I see the difference that ironing makes. Ironing may take time, but it makes sewing so much easier. It also gives the finished garment a cleaner, crisper look. Over to the sewing machine. I sewed the first sleeve to the blouse, removing the pins before the sewing machine needle moved over top of them. Removing the pins before you sew reduces needle and thread breakage. In addition, less bent pins and less sewing machine maintenance. When you hit a pin when sewing, it throws off the alignment of your sewing machine, which can eliminate the machine's ability to do simple things like the zigzag stitch. This can be fixed at a repair shop, which can be costly, but good news! There are videos on YouTube that show you how to fix this problem. Over the years, I found YouTube to be a great source of information about how my machine works and how to repair simpler problems. I'd rather fix my sewing machine myself in a few hours than send it out for a repair for the whole week. Sewing the sleeves took longer than usual. 
Since the fabric was so slippery, I worked slowly but steadily around the armhole to sew the sleeve to the blouse. I made sure to hold the fabric firmly in place with my fingertips so that the sleeve did not slide out of place against the blouse. Then I sewed the second sleeve to the blouse. Since I used a finer needle and finer thread to sew the chiffon blouse, I used a smaller stitch length as well. I set my stitch length to about 12 stitches per inch. This length didn't leave unsightly gaps in the chiffon and it wasn't hard to unpick when I decided to take less fabric out of the side seams. Sewing chiffon was quite a learning experience for me. One thing that I would do differently is I would buy fine silk pins if they were on sale because they're sharper and finer than regular pins and would leave less of a hole in the chiffon. Another thing I would do differently is baste all my seams rather than pin them. This would hold the fabric in place better than pins. My next step was to re-sew the blouse hem in the two places that I unpicked. I tucked any fraying edges back inside the rolled hem and stitched it in place. This was very easy to re-hem because only a small portion was unpicked and the hem was already folded and ironed down. Here is the finished blouse. I'm wearing Tommy Hilfiger jeans and a fossil belt that I bought at the Hudson's Bay Company. The shoes are Comfort Dex Flex from Payless. The camisole is from Susie Shear. The Liz Claiborne blazer and delightful scarf are from Value Village thrift stores. My Givenchy earrings were in a Ziploc bag full of jewelry that I bought for $5 at a church Christmas bazaar. I hope you enjoyed this video on how I tailored a blouse to fit a smaller size. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.